Hello for one and welcome back to a brand new video from Bird1. Today I'm going to show you guys how to efficiently tune your cards on mining Ethereum. First you need to know that if you BIOS mod your card you will get more efficiency out of it. But it's really risky to do and it can break your card because some of my subscribers have had that problem already. Um, if you make a small mistake it can go really bad and I'll make a video later on about it too. I have many videos to make as well. And if you do something wrong, it just breaks your card or it doesn't start up anymore or it's not recognized by the computer. It's really complicated. I don't want you guys to risk it if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, okay, it's fine if you just experiment with them, but it's always risky. So keep that in mind before you go ahead and do this video. Of course, I already BIOS modded the card, so it's all in the videos that are already made. But for today, we need three things. You need your card, you need the MSI Afterburner, and you need a miner. Um, just open MSI Afterburner to see what it's using, uh, what your core clocks are and your memory clocks. And of course, you need a miner that will be running during the tests. So first of all, we're going to do a little um, benchmark, let's say, on the standard clocks of the card. So now you can see that we are hashing at about 27.5 mega hashes per second with a BIOS modded RX470 Samsung memory 8GB Nitro Sapphire OC Plus. It's a really long name and this card is pretty good. So um, I'm using OBS to record this video so you can see that the hash rate has gone down by about 1 mega hashes per second. So keep that in mind. I will always pause the video real quickly to see how it's going. So without any overclocks or underclocks this card can hit 27.5 mega hashes per second. But as you can see over here it's using 100 watts almost exactly at the moment. So we're going to calculate really quickly on how much that is. So to calculate how much watts per mega hash you do uh, you just have to go ahead Ahead and put in the wattage first like 100 watts and divide it by how much it's hashing so 27.5 is the current hash rate on that power usage and just hit it so we have 3.63 watts per mega hash and that's pretty efficient already but keep in mind that your system always will be using energy even though it has one GPU or seven GPUs so the more GPUs you can put in one system the more efficient they get so we just look onto the cards of course right now so make sure you always have a kilowatt meter between it in the wall so you really know what you're using what you're drawing out of the wall but for now we are just gonna go ahead and find the most efficient most efficient tuning on the card. To start doing this, um, I'm gonna say that there's a lot of risks doing this as well because uh, it can crash the card and it will restart your system. So if you have a crashed card, it will just um, kill your computer screen, will go black, it will restart and you'll have to log back in and do everything over again. But make sure you have apply overclocking at system start of you need to turn it off because otherwise you can go into an infinity loop because your computer will restart after the crash and it will apply the overclocking again and it will crash out again. So it will go over and over and your system will be stuck. It's really hard to get out of it. So make sure that button is off. Don't turn it on. So now when we've seen all the risks and what is capable of being done, we need to go ahead and find the most efficiency tuning. So on every card it's going to be different as I shown in the video because many cards have different memory types, different brands, um, different core clock speeds out of the box, different memory speeds out of the box and all cards are different like this card can have a memory clock of 2100 megahertz per second is just the highest it can go and that's also one of the best things to do inside a card the memory clock does all the work the core clock just uses power and doesn't do many mega per second more so you will always need to try and get your mem memory clock to the maximum hash rate you can that is stable. So let's say some people have commented in a video below that they can only reach 1900 megahertz per second, uh, just megahertz I mean, and some people can go over 2050 with the same card. So brands matter, um, the card quality matters. So it's always different. You'll have to go ahead and find it out by crashing your card a few times. I'll make a video about that soon as well. 
it's gonna be called crash clocks but for now we're gonna go back to the efficiency so we increase the memory clock that will also give us more memory uh, speeds in the mega hashes and the core clock is actually doing too much work and he needs to be tuned down for this card the most efficient tuning is 1100 megahertz so we're gonna clock it downwards and you'll see the drop of the power usage so we went from 100 plus watts to only 84 and okay we'll just a little bit damage our mega ashes per second but it's going to be pretty stable so i'm going to turn the obs recorder back off and see how much i can get out of it so as you can see it's a pretty steady 28.4 mega ashes per second using only 83 watts so we're going to get our calculator bat back on here and calculate it again so we need to put in our hash rates and our wattage first of course so wattage divided by how much we're hashing so 28.5 and that is a very low 2.94 so we increased the wattage per mega hash in significantly so the lower it gets the more efficient you go so this is really really nice but I have tested many options on this card like going to 950 but then it loses too much mega hashes per second because there's always some sort of balance inside a graphics card. Let's say the core clocks need to do um, a little bit of work and the memory clock just is like a guy bringing books to the one that has to read the books. But if he um, gives too many books and the guy's like, oh my god, I can't handle it, then the hash rates go down. So the core clock is the guy that needs to handle the books and the memory clock is the guy that puts the books on his desk. And the more books there's going to be piling up, the less mega hashes per second. So they need to be in sync. So this guy can, let's say, um, read two books an hour and you only place two books on his table to read. But if you place three books on his table, he can't uh, read all the three books and there will be a little bit of leftovers. And that means those leftovers are using power without being read. That's a really good explanation maybe for people that don't understand how it works. So hopefully everything worked out as planned and you have a very efficient card right now. Um, if you still have questions, just comment it below and me or one of my subscribers will answer your questions as fast as possible. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and see you guys in the next one.